I'm Dan Brown here at Playlist Live in Orlando, Florida uh, with Driftless Pony Club. And first question, uh, just what kind of music do you guys make? How do you want to describe it? Uh, I don't know, rock or indie rock, we sound kind of like older Modest Mouse, Built to Spill, that sort of old, deal. Old guy music, I yeah, guess. Yeah, old guy stuff. <laughs> Pixies, maybe old Weezer. Do you consider yourselves to be part of like the YouTube music community? Definitely? Yes? Yeah. I think so. I think, yeah, I think we definitely, the majority of our fans know us through YouTube. Because you guys have been around longer than YouTube has even existed, right? <laughs> We've been around longer than maybe maybe a lot of these kids have existed, <laughs> actually. But you guys, you guys have seen a really big boost in popularity uh, as, Craig, your video blogs have uh, grown in popularity. Was the transition from, I, I don't know, to having a larger following, was that awkward at all? What was the most, like, difficult part about that? At first, I think it was difficult because um, we didn't know how to interact with total strangers very, very well uh, that, that liked our music. Because we, we, we toured a lot, but we were used to playing to an empty room. And then when people were there and they wanted to talk to us and sign things, we, I, we didn't know how to act at first. No. And, but uh, other than that, I think the transition has been awesome. We actually, to have people watch our music is great, or watch us play is great. How would you say uh, your relationship with your fans uh, is different than the relationship between like, a non-YouTube artist is with their fans? An artist that doesn't really have a YouTube following, they probably don't interact directly with their fans as much as we do. If you're solely known for music, you're probably you're you're, sell, you're, you're selling out clubs, and you just you, you go there, you play, and then you probably go backstage and don't don't come out and talk to people. Yeah, we're, we're just like we end up you know selling our own merch and stuff like that, so we're always out talking and interacting. And yeah, it's good. If you guys were to be uh, approached by a, a big record label that wants to do a whole bunch of promotion and but also take like a big cut, is that something that you'd want to do or would you want to stay uh, more independent and have more control over your work? I think I would want to hold on to as much control as possible. It, it would probably depend on, on what the record label is offering, I guess. If, if they're going to come in and produce and tell us how to write our music, then definitely not at all. But uh, if they're, if they actually, if the deal seems pretty good and we still can be independent, I would say yes. It's a different model now. Bands can do a lot more than that, than what labels used to do, and let the band do be more independent. I guess if that's the only way the, the relationship's going to work. Thanks for watching. Uh, I actually had the chance to interview a bunch of YouTube musicians while I was at Playlist Live. So to watch another interview with another YouTube musician, click on another YouTube musician over there, and also uh, be sure to subscribe to Fuse right here on YouTube.